Monday, March 30th? Yeah. It feels like it has been a thousand years. But my point here is, um, this is my copy of Animal Crossing New Horizons. It is still in its plastic packaging. Um, and everyone is mad at me because of this. I'm not saying they don't have every reason to be mad at me. They should be. You should be mad at me. I'm making this video so that you can be mad at me and yell at me to play this game. Um, after you yell at me to finish playing Three Houses. But don't get me wrong, there is a reason. It's a bad reason, but it is a reason. Um, and it's because I have been playing Neopets again. What is Neopets, you ask? Well, somebody wasn't 10 years old in 2005, obviously. Neopets is a virtual pet simulator, kind of. And when I think pet simulator, I think of things like Nintendogs, where you're like taking care of an animal kind of thing. Neopets really isn't like that, despite the name. If it's any kind of simulator, it's really an economy simulator. Um, most of the action in the game, such as it is, revolves around the buying and selling and trading of virtual goods. It's also surprisingly lore-heavy to the uninitiated. Everything takes place in the world of Neopia, and over the 22-year lifespan of the website, that lore has only been expanded and deepened and enriched. Neopets are clearly shown to have human-level intelligence and human-level society, and while that makes the idea of owning a Neopet rather dubious, the human presence is very minimal. Um, it almost feels like there aren't really any people in Neopia, it's all just the pets. There aren't even any human avatars, it's all so abstracted that it really just kind of feels like you're more of a guide or a benefactor for your Neopet rather than an active physical presence in the world. And that's all well and good, but what do you do on Neopets? Well, luckily, if you go into the help section on the website, there is a handy dandy little intro that should explain everything. If you are sensitive to flashing lights or terrible design choices, then I would suggest that you skip this part or just look away from your screen and imagine how bad it looks. Are you ready? where the fun is. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm sold. I want to enjoy Feed My Pet and get items. So, I mean, this looks pretty much like I remember it for the most part. I think I, I remember this it having more of a sidebar over here, um, but I that may be like an older version of the website. Um, so I can't really do anything until I sign up. And look at that. You get 2,500 free Neo points when you sign up. So, I mean, what are we waiting for? All right, so it, here it is, the, the um, moment we've all been waiting for, creating a Neopet. So, um, I've thought about this a little bit. I've thought about what I wanted, and we could have any number of these Neopets. It gives me a Scorchio by default, um, but we could also have, cla you know, the classics, the Loop, the Shoryu, um, the... Uh, oh, where the Kachik? Um, all, all good, good options. Um, I think since I've been on a seal kick, um, which I mean, I love seals generally, so I don't want to say it's a kick. It's like, you know, 
I, I have always loved seals. Um, but apparently I didn't really last time I played Neopets because I've never had a Tuscan any, and I've decided that I want a Tuscan any this time. I'm gonna go with green because uh, the name that I was thinking about, um, I don't know if I will have updated the Golden Deer seals yet, but I, um, I think that I will want to pay homage um, through through my Tuscan any to uh, good old egg spots slicter. <laughs> um, let's see if that's available. There's no way that's not not available. Wait, there's no way it's available. Um, because of course it is. What if? What about just egg spots? Cause that is that available? It is ju just egg spots is available. So, um, I think we'll go with it. He doesn't have any spots right now, but I think there's a version that you can paint it where it does have spots. So, um, I'll be sure to get him glasses as soon as possible. Um, all right, egg spots male. Um, where does your new pet like to live? Um, I would say, I mean, some place where he can see, he can look at the, um, you know, the sunset. So I would say like the mountains, probably. What is your Neopet like doing? Reading and learning, gathering food, exploring the land, making friends, hunting for treasure, pestering others. Uh, definitely not that one. Uh, I would say exploring the land. How does your Neopet greet others? Insult from afar? No. Maybe approach with caution. And then select your Neopet stats. Um, well, I don't know why you'd go with this one. It seems like some of these are objectively better than the others. Like this one's ob objectively the best one, right? Like higher strength, but that's not that accurate though. Um, so I'm gonna go with A. I'm gonna go with the worst stat spread actually. All right, would you like to take the Neopets tutorial? <laughs> I think I know how to play Neopets, so... Well, despite my confidence, I decided it wouldn't be a bad idea to check out the tutorial. Who knows, I might learn something new. Uh, I didn't, but I, I could have. As it was, everything was more or less the way I remember it. You play games, you explore the land, you enjoy feed your pet and get item. I should probably note that this website took up the better part of my attention span for the better part of my childhood, and even a little bit beyond that. And like many things that you devote yourself to when you're young, I would come to find that it came back pretty easily to me. I don't know what I get for this, but... Tutorial Certificate of Completion. This is like... Yeah, this I had to haven't changed at all, like the pop-up windows. Wow. Oh man, oh this hasn't changed a bit, man. Or unless, is this place? No, Fairyland, that's been there. Um, I, th I think I remember a lot of the like daily things that you could do on Neo Pets, so I know um, the giant omelet is like the go-to. Oh, okay, this is different. This does look different. It's not letting me scroll. Okay, okay, that's kind of neat. Uh, I think it's in the plateau. Oh yeah, no, they they did update this. There's a giant omelet. Wheel of monotony. <laughs> you approach the massive omelet and manage to take a slice. That looks like tomato and pepper, maybe? Spicy red pepper omelet, that sounds good. I like putting peppers in my omelets. Next on the docket was creating a Neopets bank account. This is standard stuff. You want to save money, you want to collect interest. But I found out I needed a Neopian address, not my real address, of course, which required me to make a Neo home. This was never something I was terribly interested in when I played the game as a kid. It looks like it's got much more robust customization now than it used to, but I just can't really bring myself to care that much about it. And really, I kind of wish I'd thought about it more. Looking back, having been playing Neopets for about a week, I remembered that I really had an affinity for Terror Mountain and kind of wished that I'd built my Neo home there. As it is, I settled on Brightvale to sort of fit the aesthetic for Xbox. Uh, Brightvale is the renaissance-y sort of area, um, which, well, I hope that he likes it anyway. This is all for you, buddy. 
After this, I decided I would jump right into my dailies. Dailies are activities that refresh every day on Neopets. Um, usually ones that give you chances at really good items or winning a lot of Neo points. But it turned out that my account needed to be more than a few minutes old to participate in these activities. So there was nothing else for it. It was time for the Flash games. Cast Basher, classic. Termic roll, I think I got pretty good at that one. Okay, Meerkat Chase is a classic. When you think of a Neopets game, think of Meerkat Chase, if you think of a Neopets game at all. Um, it's Snake. It's it's just Snake. But we'll do classic first, and I mean, go hard or go home. Well, I went home. It's not that the game is necessarily difficult, I just find it really demoralizing to die over and over again, and essentially not make any progress. There's not really a whole lot of challenge insofar as you can learn from your mistakes, it's mostly just a ticking time bomb until some kind of nonsense kills you. But then again, I guess that is what a scrub would say. Definitely gonna die. Oh, this is so stressful. Uh, oh, okay. Alright, that's as high as I'm gonna get here. <laughs> it doesn't even get- that's not even a good exchange rate. Why does anybody play this game? This is the last one. Meerkat Chase, um, now as then is a game that I always think I'm going to enjoy and always do not enjoy. Oh, let's see what's- what, better than you I think is like you had to beat a particular score of something. Okay. Oh, Doubloon Disaster. Yeah, I remember that game. Okay. So Dorak scored 1600 in this week's challenge game. Um, yeah, let's go. Let's, we're, we'll take him down. Oh man, this hasn't changed a bit. It, it's like similar to um, Meerkat Chase, but the mines like chase you around. Oh! Okay, well, uh, that really couldn't be helped. So there, there is a little bit, a little bit of uh, nonsense that can happen in this game, but something that you can't do in Meerkat Chase is blow the mines up against each other. So that's the strategy. I prefer Doubloon Disaster to Meerkat Chase for basically one reason. You can cheese Doubloon Disaster. Just go around in circles and patiently wait for the mines to crash into each other. It's not that it doesn't take skill, it just doesn't take as much skill. Oh! <sighs> okay, well, we tried. Um, how about we we do a little cast basher? This is a classic. Um, the context here is that Cass was a bad guy in one of the plots that they did. The citizens of Meridel don't like him. Okay, I think you have to unlock these. Yeah, okay. So the trick here is you wait for the wind. Oh. You wait for the wind to be like a higher number <laughs> than it is now. Oh. Okay, that was pretty good. Seven, six, seven, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah! Oh, my muscle memory's coming right back. Oh, okay, that falls pretty fast. It's all coming back to me. Nine, twelve, that's pretty good. Let's send that. Nice, okay. Oh, oh, whoa! Some, something has happened, you're now eligible to use Wackacast as an avatar on the Neo boards! Well, hot dog. I'm gonna be the, the talk of the town now. Um, I'm pretty sure if you go on the Neo boards, you get banned for basically, like, existing. You can't talk about anything, um, because nothing is allowed. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thousand and ninety-one. Look at that. I am a cast bashing slasher. <laughs> cast slinging slasher. Uh, all right. Excellent. Okay. Um, let's find some more games. Let's play some more games. Oh, here we go. Here we go.
ice cream machine. This was my jam. Um, also, this has like the best theme song out of any Neopets game. <laughs> Ice cream machine, now this is a test of true skill. As you can see, your cursor is attached to the little Chia character and she has to move around dodging ice cream scoops. The levels get progressively harder and you have to dodge more ice creams in order to pass the level. This is good for a couple reasons. Not only does it give the game a sense of meaningful progression, but it also gives the player a sense of progression. The first level is pathetically easy, but as the game goes on, you're forced to adapt to build your skill and your speed, and even a little bit of strategy when it comes to the power-ups. The game controls very smoothly, and unlike Mirka Chase and even Doubloon Disaster, it doesn't throw a whole lot of nonsense at you. I mean, like, literally it does. If you've seen some of these ice creams, they're like fish and, and bombs and blueberry. Dang it. All right, that's it for us. Since I had accumulated a fair amount of Neo points, I decided it would be a good idea to go shopping. Eggspots wouldn't be hungry for a while, so I didn't need to get any food, besides I'd gotten that free omelet earlier. So I decided to try looking for toys and books. Toys to increase his happiness and books to increase his intelligence. But I couldn't resist the lure of the money tree and its potential free items that aren't complete garbage. Fire moat. That sounds cool. Oh, I got it! This hasn't changed at all. Plushie shop, let's go. Look at all these plushies. Dung, you could get a poop plushie. Um, there's no Tuscan any plushies, it doesn't look like. Rainbow reject side bunny, why is it a reject? It's got all the colors of the rainbow on it. I think egg spots will love it. Um, I want at least 523. This was a classic thing with Neopets, you, you get to haggle. So I'm gonna go, um, I like to kind of round out my amount, so I'm gonna go 504 and see if she takes it, and she does. Oh, look at this. Blue Tuscanini tails? That's perfect. He's a Tuscanini. Ooh, we're gonna go 970. I think the higher it is, like, the more you can haggle it down. Ooh. I'm gonna still say 970. That's higher than he offered last time. Oh, okay. 990. I have to eat two, you know. 995. All right, that's good. Um, what else? What's the cheapest one here? Cheapest book. Green. <laughs> Sounds good. Beautiful. Look at this. We got all sorts of books. Okay. Um, so. Let's go and do a little bit of reading, shall we? Um, we'll read Mystery of the Cougar Up Hot first because that was in our starter pack. Um, so we'll read it, two egg spots. That's one of my favorites, thanks. Weren't you just born? <laughs> I like books with pictures in all, oh, of course you do. That is like such a boring book, oh. Oh, the pet pet shop, oh, okay. Let's go. Uh, see, the, these ones are classic. The Wharf, the Baba, and I've never seen that one before in my life, but it's kind of cute. Oh, Uni's clothing, here we go. All right, cool shades. You can't equip those though. So are they that cool? So I think the, it looks like these are like specific to um, particular types of Neopets. As awesome as those golden pants are, um, I don't think egg spots can wear them. Um, let's look for Tuscanini. Wrestling cape. Oh, that sounds great. Definitely um, worth a look, I think. Oh, look at these. That's cool. Stay cool when you listen to Jazzmosis. Squid hat? <gasps> oh, okay. I think I might want that one. That's a good one. Mohawk, yerbal. Oh, that's only for yerbals? Oh, those would have been perfect for egg spots. Like that one too. That looks just like what he wears. Tuscanini wrestling cape. He can be a luchador or he can be nothing at all. 
I was quickly beginning to realize that this was an area of the website that had really developed a lot since I'd been gone. I had played a little bit past the point where wearables were introduced, but most of them were relegated to the Neo Cash Mall, which meant that you had to pay real world money to get them. Since then, it's expanded quite a bit, as you can see, and most of these items can be bought simply using Neo Points. I wanted to see just what you could dress up a Tuscan in, Ian, so I went over to popular fan site Jelly Neo and used their item database to see what I could find. It turns out there's actually a lot of cute options for Tuscan innies, and this isn't even including the generic items that can be equipped to any Neopet. The ones that caught my eye also happen to be among the more expensive of the lot. It's the green suit Tuscan innie set. I think it looks very dapper, and it's green. So that's a win-win. But of course, it's not just clothes that make the seal. For where would Igspots be without his spots? To achieve our dreams of model perfection, the painter would have to become the painted. What do you pay for a paintbrush in real life? A few cents on the dollar, maybe. Maybe a little bit more if it's a particularly fancy, nice brush. Well, you can leave all of your notions of cheap paintbrushes at the door when you enter Neopia because they are among the most coveted and expensive items on the entire website. See, when we first created our pet, we could choose from four colors, red, yellow, green, and blue. But there are many, many more colors available. However, these require special means to get to them. The most well-known and common of these is with paintbrushes. I don't know what kind of paint they're using, but whatever it is, it changes the color of the Neopet permanently. Or at least until the next time you paint it. For egg spots, I would need the spotted paintbrush, appropriately enough. The brush itself is yellow with black polka dots, and for most Neopets, this is what they end up looking like. However, the Tuscanini gets a special spotted variant. When you paint it, it ends up looking just like a harbor seal. Look at this, I couldn't even dream of a more perfect Neopet. Alright, let's do it. How much is this gonna cost me? Uh. I'm just kidding. Of course I knew these things were gonna be expensive. This is actually less than I thought it would be. Anyway, it's a good goal. I need something to work towards after all. It's gonna be close to a million Neo points, so we better start saving up. From that point on, I was playing every day. Of course, after the initial 24 to 48 hours, I could start doing all of my dailies, which sometimes yielded some pretty good results. I also started to explore the games a little bit more. There was a good mix of new and old. My favorite growing up, especially for the Neo Point value that it provided, was Mutix Drop. But I found it was a little bit boring. I really just remembered everything based on muscle memory, and while I had patience for that as a kid, if it takes longer than Cast Basher and it, I don't find it very fun, then I'm probably not going to be doing it. On the other hand, my other favorite game, Sutex Tomb, held up really well. I guess when you get older, you just tend to like puzzle games more. On that note, the award for most improved games, by which I mean I like them more now than I used to, go to Snow Muncher and, drumroll please, Kiko Match 2. Snow Muncher is both the weirdest and most self-explanatory game title that you could probably think of. You guide this little polar chuck who likes to eat snow. However, you have to watch the gauge on the side to make sure that he doesn't get too full, otherwise you'll lose a life. You can also die from snow falling on you or from running out of time. Unlike something like Meerkat Chase, and I know I keep throwing Meerkat Chase under the bus, I feel like when I lose a life in this game, it's because of something that I could have prevented. I don't usually score too high on this game, but I feel a sense of accomplishment when I get past what my usual score is. On the topic of games where I do get a high score, Kiko Match 2 has really come from behind. This is just a simple concentration game, and back in the day, it wasn't really anything special. Kiko Match 1 was one of the earliest games on the site, and Kiko Match 2 is just its slightly flashier successor. But I figured out the hidden secret to this game. First of all, this isn't much of a secret, but you want to turn animations off. That saves you a lot of time, and time is everything in this game. The other secret is playing on a touchscreen. 
My laptop has a touchscreen and I hardly ever remember or use this feature, but in Kiko Match, the difference between scrolling your mouse between the cards and just being able to touch them, especially with two hands, is incredible. Some people might think this is an exploit or somehow cheating, but I can't really bring myself to agree with that. I don't think this is really any different from plugging in a controller and using that to play, and it's just one of those side effects of Neopets still being arguably stuck in 2006 while the rest of technology has progressed. This is a rare case where that actually benefits the game. Usually it just means that you can't play the game anymore. As far as new games go, the standouts for me were two more puzzle games um, and bubble shooter games at that, Hakiko and Spinnacles. Hakiko, as you probably could tell from the name, is a variant on Pachinko. However, instead of being a chance-based game, this one is more of a puzzle slash kind of pinball-ish game. The goal is to clear out all of the green spheres by hitting them with the bubbles that you shoot. Some of these are in hard to reach places and so you have to be careful about when you clear out certain spheres because that might be your only path to access other ones. Overall, I found it really fun, and while the RNG does sometimes screw you over, it's not so demoralizing that it kept me from playing it at all. I don't know what it is with Kikos, but they seem to be making the best games on the website. Spinnacles barely looks Neopets themed at all, it's just sort of broadly based on the different worlds. This is another bubble shooter, and it's pretty simplistic, but it all revolves around, well, revolving. Whenever you hit this central cluster of bubbles, it will spin. This means that you'll have to angle certain shots to keep up your combo. Every so often a new layer of bubbles will appear, and if too many bubbles get stacked up, then it's game over. This game is really chill and it's really nice to play while you're watching a TV show or a YouTube video or you just kind of want something to relax to. And for the final nail in the coffin of Mirka Chase, they released a better snake game where you're an actual snake. Yeah, you get to play as the Snowager. The Snowager is a big ice worm that hoards treasure up in Terror Mountain. He falls asleep three times a day for an hour each time, and that's when you can try and go in and steal some treasure. Most of the time the Snowager is an antagonist, but this time the tables have turned. You guide the Snowager around the level and try and hit this dirty, thieving little Chia thief to get your loot back. It's surprisingly forgiving to the point where I think it's maybe a little bit too easy, but if the Chia steals your loot back, then you can just bump into him again and steal it again. At first I thought that you had to wait for the Chia to drop stuff, but you could just ram into him. It's pretty easy, all told. Not only is it easy, but it pays out wonderfully. Every single time I've played this game, I've managed to get a thousand Neo points. It's a bit longer than I usually prefer, but if I've got a few extra minutes, it's worth doing. I'd be happy to do more in-depth game reviews in the future, and there are a lot of games to review. I've barely even scratched the surface. And really, I haven't scratched the surface for most of this website. I haven't covered shops, restocking, the pound, trading items or pets, the battle dome, any of the creative contests or the Neopian times, the plots, the quests, the history of the website, the labray, oh, the, the avatars? The, it, there's rabbit hole after rabbit hole, there's so many things. I kept thinking, ah, oh, just one more thing, I'll just cover one more thing that I encountered in my first week, and there's just no way that I can cover it in the sort of depth that I want to. I do want to recount one event that happened, though. I happened to make this new account during a special fairy quest event. Yes, there are fairies in Neopia. They're a pretty big deal. Anyway, normally fairies only give you quests randomly, but this week they were giving quests every day if you went over to their headquarters. I tried one quest from the Grey Fairy at first who wanted me to get something that I just could not find. The shop wizard, which usually helps you find items, is disabled if you're on a fairy quest. I ended up having to give up that quest, but the next quest I got was from what I thought was just a normal water fairy. The item she had me find was cheap and easy, and I just got it from the normal shop in a matter of minutes. But when I came back, I found that this was no ordinary water fairy. This was the fountain fairy, as in the rainbow fountain, as in the place where you can paint your Neopet any color. 
When you complete her quest, the Fountain Fairy gives you access to the Rainbow Fountain. And sure enough, there's a drop down menu and you can just pick the color you want. Here it is. I could just paint Egg Spot Spotted right now. But even though the option was open to me, I couldn't bring myself to do it. I'd already set about my goal and I wanted to do it right. And for me, doing it right means exploring every obsolete, dated, inconsistent, flash-based nook and cranny of this website. And I certainly hope you'll join me. And egg spots. Oh, and Dorte, he has a pet pet now. Yeah, pets can have pets, they're called pet pets. That's another thing that we didn't really get into this episode, but anyway. There's a lot to look forward to and I, for one, am excited to get into it. So in conclusion, was Neopets a good waste of my time during the quarantine? Yes. Yeah, I would say yes. I, I don't know if I could recommend Neopets necessarily. For me personally, it has helped me be productive insofar as it's given me the subject for a video. But if you're the type of person who tends to just sink hours and hours and hours and hours into a game, and you're already doing that with Animal Crossing, then, um, you know, or some other game, then I I can't in good in good con then I can't in good conscience recommend this to you. Um, I will say if you have younger siblings or kids or cousins or nieces or nephews um, who are kids, then uh, they might like this a lot. Um, I would say it's among the better forms of online children's entertainment, like. And I'm, I'm completely biased there, but it is owned by an edutainment software company for a reason. Um, and I think it does a great job of kind of tangential learning. It's got a very rich vocabulary being used. So um, for any kids who may be having like reading comprehension problems, but enjoy playing computer games, this might be kind of a good like um, way for them to kind of learn without realizing that they're learning. But I, I do think it fills sort of a niche that I don't really see from a lot of modern games where um, it's got a wide variety of simple games. It's almost like its own little arcade. Um, and that's kind of nice. Um, you don't really see that as much usually um, with the advent of mobile gaming. Um, these uh, sort of single purpose games have sort of um, become pigeonholed into their own apps or their own um, like standalone entities. And the only time you, you kind of see all of these mini game type games in, under one roof um, would be compilation games, um, things like Mario Party maybe, um, or like flash game websites for children. <laughs> um, and Neopets has kind of the um, benefit of existing within all within this cohesive world and um, set up and everything. Before I go, one last thing that I wanted to do is show a little bit of my Neopets merch. Um, I used to collect this stuff like mad and I got rid of most of it. I, I really um, cleared it out uh, and like looking back I'm kind of surprised how willing I was to let go of it. Um, but I did keep a few things either because I they just sort of like you know, were buried one place or another and I forgot where they were or, and I, you know, found them while digging through my stuff. Um, or I just couldn't bear to part with them for one reason or another. Um, so it's a very small, um, selection of stuff, but, uh, I'm, I figured I would share that with you today. So, um, first up is these are like, these are like little burrs, like they you, you they just have stuck to my belongings and I have never been able to get rid of them. Um, I don't want to throw them away, but like, I swear I have put them in like three different garage sales and they've never sold. Um, and it's this set of like, it's like a, a Neopets computer pack. Um, so these are like CD cases, but they're just like paper. Um, so you've got a Grondo and a Loop and a Drake. Um, and then they also came with this mouse pad, um, which is pretty swanky. Next up are these little figurines. I'll try and... As you can see, it's a Scorchio and a Loop. Um, and these came out before you could customize Neopets. 
Um, but you may be able to see that I took it on myself to customize these ones. So uh, I managed to get a little earring on the loop and then the Scorchio, I think I tried to like give him hair um, because this is like felt that was super glued to his head at one point. Um, so yeah, before, before Neopets wearables were a thing, I was like trying to make my own wearables. Um, so that's those. I really like the quality of those figurines. Um, they're like kind of, they're shiny. Um, uh, something about the plastic is a little more like glossy than you would get with the Pokemon ones usually. So um, they kind of stood out from the Pokemon in their own way, um, but they're also the same size just about. They're they're scaled um, appropriately to what the Pokemon were. So I, if I wanted to, I could play with them together. I don't remember if I ever did, but um, I could have. Uh, and then this is the one remaining Neopets plushie that I just could not bear to part with. It's a plushie Shoryu plushie. Um, that's one of the colors that Neopets can come in is a plushie color. So they've got like these little patches and you know, this, you can see the stitching on them. So I just think this is super cute because it's like it's exaggerated how much it looks like a plushie, like it's supposed to look handmade. Um, and I like how, it, I like that it's small. Um, so he fits really nicely on my desk or, um, you know, wherever. So I had kept him just kind of with all my plushies, which are mostly Pokemon now. Um, so he was kind of blending in, but uh, now that I am playing Neopets, I think I'll put him on my desk and I don't know, I might even, try and go for my own plushie show you on the website but we'll see and then finally this was the mother load i was moving stuff around in the garage and, with my brother and he looked into a box and was like hey you know you have pokemon cards back here oh no wait they're neopets cards um and that really intrigued me because i also think that i had gotten rid of the neopets cards but apparently not. This says 231 Neopets TCG, um, which indicates that I counted through all these cards and I counted 231 cards. Um, for those of you who don't know, Neopets had a Wizards of the Coast trading card game at one point, but I actually played this. I built decks. I think the decks were maybe the ones that I got rid of. Obviously, like they're not super well taken care of. They're just kind of in a plastic bag but I am super psyched to look through these and see which ones I have. Um, I at least know I have a scorched neg, but I'm gonna leave that to a different video. If you are interested in seeing all of these Neopets cards unboxed or unbagged, then um, let me know, please, in the comments. Let me know what you would like to see. I am super down for making more Neopets content. Um, regardless of whether you want me to or not. It's, it's, it's not an if, it's a what kind. Um, <laughs> so uh, at least at this point, um, but if you're absolutely just like, no, please stop, play Animal Crossing, um, then I, I suppose I'll listen to that too. And if you are interested in making your very own Neopets account, if you don't have one already, um, I'm going to provide a referral link. So. I hope this is allowed. I don't know. The The Neopets referral program was very clearly created in an era before social media. Um, and it was the sort of thing where you would like email your friends and say, hey, join this fun website. And, or you, you know, kind of spread it through word of mouth. Um, I actually forgot that this was a thing until I kind of saw it at the bottom of the page. And I figured if this, um, rekindles anybody's interest in Neopets and you're making an account anyway, then, you know, you could tell them I sent you. Let me know. Send me a Neo mail. Maybe we can be Neo friends. That's going to be all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in um, and for sticking with this just long-winded monstrosity of a video. Um, I really enjoyed making this and I hope you enjoyed watching it. And please take care. Stay safe. Stay at home, play Neopets so that you don't feel like going outside of your house. Um, if this can keep anybody home, then that's, I, as far as I consider, that's a good thing. But for real, take care and I will see you next time.